Hi, this is Ginger Cook. And in this tip and tricks, what we're going to be talking about when we talk about how to varnish a painting, and you sort of got a clue to that when you see that I have three of the Liquitex brands of varnish out, and I'm going to show you the kind of what you might do with them. And I have a way of varnishing that I developed over the years that's kind of different than the directions on the bottle. So uh, stay with me, and I'll show you what we're going to do. First off, you want to start off with a a soft brush. This one's kind of older. This was a ruby satin silver that had kind of worn out. No longer makes a fine edge, but it's perfect for varnish. Um, a brush like this would be nice too. I like to keep the brushes in kind of in relationship to the size of the painting. If this was a larger painting, I would get a di bigger brush. This is an 8x10 canvas, so um, I think that's a, there's 8x10. It might be a little bigger than that, but in any event, um, it's small enough where these brushes are similar to what I painted the picture with. Now, you have the three varnishes. You have matte varnish, satin finish, and this will be, um, a, you won't really notice it after it's on. It will seal the acrylic, which is what varnishes do. What, what acrylic varnishes do are different than your oil painting varnishes, or say a Solvar varnish by Liquitex which is designed for acrylic and oil painting. What your acrylic varnishes do is they actually molecularly bond with the paint and they seal it. So then later on, um, they really protect it. I always recommend two coats, two coats like that, two coats. And let's, let's just um, talk about that for a minute. Two coats of varnish and then the other thing is um, you want to dry them at least an hour apart. Next day is good too. Uh, I prefer there's three kinds of varnishes here. We have the matte varnish satin finish. There's also a, a flat, I didn't grab them all. There's a flat, you know, a matte, what we call a matte varnish. And this satin is a combination of uh, matte varnish, which is, you know, there's absolutely no shine to it whatsoever, and a gloss varnish. Over here you'll see a gloss varnish. And then my favorite for me is the gloss medium and varnish, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But because the camera is not going to like all the shiny stuff on this picture, in fact, if you're going to photograph your picture or you're going to make a jaclay of your picture or you're going to use a high resolution scanner, you want to take the photograph before you varnish. So right now I've put some satin, some satin varnish in a little cup like this and put some on the, uh, on the brush. And what I want to do is I want to varnish in the direction that I painted it. A lot of people will tell you that how you varnish is you go up and down and back and forth. And this is absolutely, in my opinion, incorrect. That is, if you were using spray varnish, yes, you do it. But when you're using a brush on varnish, the trick is, so you don't get a weird glare, is to varnish in the direction of how you painted it and with similar brush strokes. See? I'm doing, I said, there's these little brush strokes in here, so that's how I'm varnishing this. Now, the reason that I prefer uh, like a gloss varnish to any of the mattes or satins is that it really brings out the color. But, you know, that's just a personal preference. Some people don't like it. They like a real flat picture. But in any event, acrylics need to be varnished. You absolutely need to do it. Now, see how I'm coming down here like this, coming over those rocks so I've changed direction. See that? I've now changed direction on that, coming, coming over the rocks. Now here, these rocks are coming up this way. And so again, I'm a little tiny bit on the brush, and I'm just covering it. Try not to talk on the phone when you're doing this. Do this in very good light. Hold your container over the picture, because if you get an accidental drip, and it dries. When you try to pick it off, it'll take the paint off clear to the canvas. So here we go. I'm going this way down the steps, down this way on the rocks. Doesn't take long to varnish. Uh, go slow. Do not shake. Do not shake the bottles. Don't shake the bottles. Okay, so oops, that's too much. That's all right. I got too much. I'll wipe a little bit off and I'll move some of that over here. You don't want to keep going over this either. There are some of you, you soft folders in the group, and what I mean by you guys is yours the ones when you do your laundry. You fold all your socks in neat little colors and put them in perfect little rows in your drawer. This is very commendable for housekeeping, but you have a tendency to overwork your pictures sometimes because everything has to be so perfect. And what will happen is if you overwork the varnish, what I mean like that is just put it on and go away. 
As long as you don't have drips, put it on and go away. See how I'm coming down at this angle? If you keep going over and over and over a dark spot, you can turn it white. Did you know that? Yeah, you can really screw this up quick. A lot of times people have screwed up a painting, they'll never varnish, and they don't understand it wasn't the varnish's fault, they just put it on incorrectly. So I'm see I'm going over this dark spot here, and even though I'm talking to you, I'm paying great attention to where I put it before, because if I miss something, this is going to get a second coat, and while you can wait an hour before you coat it, I recommend the next day, if you have the time, just put it on the next day. Let it really seal. People always ask me, how dry should your paints be? Well, you know, um, I've varnished as soon as an hour after I painted something because the varnish, again, bonds molecularly with the, um, uh, with the acrylic, but 24 hours to dry is not a bad thing, and if you're using like a golden open uh, color, um, you know, where they that doesn't, they recommend two weeks before you dry. Uh, same with um, a couple of the other paints that want to stay wet longer. Now, look, notice where I'm doing what's happening now. I'm going like this, I'm going horizontal now because that's how I painted this ocean. Do you see that? I might just put my hand over there, I want to make sure I don't get any drips. And if, I, if it puddles a little bit, I'll just come back and grab it. You can go over it a little bit, but just don't keep going over it because, again, it can turn white. Now, I personally, really, I've said it before, I really like the gloss medium and varnish. And the reason I like this particular product is because I can add it even to my paints as I work. And here's a little trick. Suppose... If you're having trouble, you notice I haven't signed this painting. Suppose you were having trouble, say I've, I've done this so I don't want to go over it again. Suppose you were having trouble um, getting a good signature or some little fine detail. If you will take a matte varnish and just go over your piece where you're, you need fine detail, the varnish kind of fills in some of the little cracks and crevices in your canvas. And, and when it's dry, it makes a very smooth surface to paint on. And again, you can keep, this isn't like a top coat of like a Salvar varnish. You can keep, I could keep painting on this picture even though I gave a coat of varnish. This has really sealed it. Uh, you may be deciding to use your acrylic paints to do uh, kids furniture or something, you know, or, you know, paint, paint some furniture. Um, in that case, I would probably take the gloss medium and varnish and do about five coats. That's my personal fe feeling about it. And then I would hit it with some sort of shellac. So anyway, this is the trick about varnishing. If you were gonna go over it with a Solvar type oil finishing varnish, this would have to dry for about three to four days before you did it again if you wanted a real high gloss shine. I never do that, I don't like the smell of it. Now the last thing um, I wanna mention is that varnish, as much as you want to wash your brush and clean it, there's always gonna be, I have found personally that there's some residue that stays in the brush. So I have a designated varnish brush because I don't want to use my good brushes with varnish because I'm never completely sure, even though I do a great job of washing them, that I've gotten it all out of the brush. But you can't, if, if you leave this sitting on the brush overnight, I mean, the brush is gone. So just keep that in mind. That's how you're going to varnish. This brush is going to be in water. You can see now, you can see I've come down here and I think I've pretty much got it all touched it with my fingers. But if I didn't, for instance, if I didn't, that's all right. I'll just do it again. In the second coat, I'll catch it. So don't don't sweat the small stuff. That's how you varnish. Um, the difference between the gloss varnish and the gloss medium and varnish is this is a little thinner. This adds a little bit more texture to it when you're varnishing. They all go on, they all kind of look white, and they dry clear. So this gets a little more runny. Did I mention you should varnish it when it's flat? Varnish the picture flat. I know there's a temptation. You have a big painting on an easel. You don't want to lay it on something. So you think I can be careful. Well, maybe you can, but if it drips and runs and stuff, you've got a mess. So my feeling is about it, to summarize, use a soft brush. Don't get too cheap a brush. Make sure that you're not leaving varnish, you know, little hairs from the brush in, in the, um, in your painting because so you don't want them to come off a really really cheap brush but I do want it soft I want to follow the brush strokes of how I painted it and then I want to let it dry maybe overnight and varnish again though you could varnish again in an hour 
So that's the tip and tricks for today. This is Ginger Cook. For more tips and tricks, uh, you know, check out the other videos on the YouTube channel. I've got some other stuff you can do with varnish. And I also would love it if you want to subscribe because I'm adding stuff weekly all the time. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. And um, come join me over at gingercooklive.gallery for more art lessons if you're interested in something weekly. Thank you very much.